I think baseball fans have become absolutely spoiled with this insanely talented crop of shortstops in MLB right now. I have to hear daily about how Francisco Lindor isn't a top 5 shortstop anymore as a Mets fan. Making a top 5 list at this position becomes genuinely impossible. And no, I'm not gonna try either. I don't want my head on a spike. But with all of this crazy talent, it's easy to forget how barren this position was not too long ago. To be a successful shortstop these days, you gotta steal bags, hit for contact, contact and pop, flash your glove every night, and play every single day. It's arguably the toughest position in baseball, and the level of production seems like it's never been higher. Here's the average split line for an MLB shortstop from 2019 to 2022 per the recording of this video. Now let's turn the dial back a decade and see what a shortstop was doing on average back then. You'll notice a similarity in batting average and on-base percentage, but a drastic drop-off in slugging, OPS, and home run to fly ball rate with a lower strikeout percentage. The bar has been set much higher now. But one guy was managing to do it all along in this time frame, a level of power unmatched by his contemporaries to go along with blazing speed, solid contact, and above average plate discipline. His name is Hanley Ramirez, and he is way, way better than you remember. Hanley was originally scouted and signed out of the Dominican Republic as a 16-year-old by the Boston Red Sox. While his defense left something to be desired, it became clear early on that Ramirez had the chance to develop into a premier offensive threat with power grades exceeding the then current image of what a shortstop should be. Originally a switch hitter, Hanley began hitting only from the right side in 2005 and improved in all areas of his game. For his efforts, he was named the number three prospect in the Eastern League that year, trailing only Francisco Liriano, who went on to have a 15-year career, and Lastings Millage, who fooled just about everybody, including me. But before the Red Sox could see through the potential Ramirez had, he was flipped in a blockbuster deal. He was packaged with Anna Ball Sanchez and others in a trade that sent Josh Beckett and Mike Lowell to Boston just ahead of his first MLB season in 2006. With little competition, Hanley Ramirez won the Florida shortstop job that spring training with ease. It didn't take him long to grab the spotlight in his first year in the bigs. He was terrific in his rookie season with 46 doubles, 11 triples, 17 home runs, and 51 stolen bases. He set Marlins records for leadoff home runs with 7 and batting average for a rookie, tying Jeff Conine with his 292 mark. He became the first Marlin in their brief franchise history to hit double digits in triples, home runs, and steals in a single season, while becoming the first rookie in National League history to steal 50 bases and score 110 runs. Ramirez and his division rival Ryan Zimmerman were neck and neck in arguably the closest National League Rookie of the Year race ever, with Hanley edging out Zim by just 3% of the votes. The Marlins were young, fun, talented, and exciting, and their new face was their stud shortstop in Hanley Ramirez. His Rookie of the Year season kickstarted an unbelievable unbelievable five-year run that set him on a Hall of Fame pace for his career. While his defense left much to be desired, Hanley was a true contact power speed threat, with an argument to be the best in the league for each of those talents. By the next season in 2007, he was already stepping things up a notch. He eclipsed 50 stolen bases again while also improving his slugging percentage by nearly 100 points thanks to an uptick in home runs and doubles. Hanley's 2007 season is just the second in MLB history for a shortstop to have 25 or more home runs and 50 or more stolen bases in a single season, matched only by Ryan Sandberg in 1985. Hanley did all of this while finishing third in the NL that season in batting average, total bases, doubles, and stolen bases, while finishing second in runs and hits. He'd end up finishing just 10th in NL MVP voting, and despite having this great season, his efforts went largely unnoticed, and Hanley couldn't even claim himself as the best shortstop of his own division thanks to a monster MVP winning campaign from Jimmy Rollins. But the lack of recognition didn't hamper Hanley much at all as he continued his dominance into next year. In 2008, Hanley slowed down a tiny bit on the base paths in exchange for an improvement in power numbers as he was moved from the leadoff hole to the middle of the Marlins lineup. He achieved a season with 30 plus doubles, 30 plus home runs, and 30 plus stolen bases, becoming just the second shortstop in MLB history to do so in a single season, joining former NL MVP Barry Larkin. This was also just the second 30 30 season in Marlins history to that point as Hanley joined Preston Wilson and his 2000 campaign. While the Marlins Marlins still couldn't crack the playoffs, they managed their first winning season in Hanley's tenure with Florida in 2008 with an 84-win season and a third-place finish. For his consistent efforts and undoubted talents, Hanley was rewarded with a team-friendly six-year extension worth $70 million. At the time, this deal looked like an absolute win for both sides, despite it being the richest deal in Marlins history to that point. Things continued to look up, with the Marlins improving to 87 wins and a second-place finish in 2009, just five games shy of a playoff berth. Hanley continued 
continued to dominate in the ensuing two years of this five-year stretch. His full season average over these five years from 2006 to 2010 is staggering to say the least. Year in and year out, Hanley managed to bat over 290 and steal over 25 bases every single season. And the only other player to do that in this window? Well, it was some guy from overseas named Ichiro Suzuki. I've heard he's pretty good. Totaling all of his counting stats from these five years, we can find only two players from 2006 to 2010 in MLB to have over 120 home runs and over 100 stolen bases. Hanley Ramirez and another underappreciated slugger in his division rival, David Wright. In this five-year period, Hanley's peak was certainly from 2007 to 2009, where he managed an OPS plus above 140 every single season. In fact, he was one of only three players with a 940 OPS or higher every year from 2007 to 2009, with the others being Albert Pujols and Mark Teixeira. You had two hulking first basemen built to slug better than anyone in the league, and then, you know, a shortstop. That's just how good Hanley was. Come 2010, Hanley was a Rookie of the Year winner, a five-time All-Star, a two-time Silver Slugger, and had just finished as highly as second place in MVP voting in 2009, losing out to an otherworldly Albert Pujols. To put it simply, the Marlins had one of the best players in MLB. But as most of us know by now, things didn't remain harmonious between these two sides for much longer. While Hanley still remained productive in 2010, the red flags began wavering much higher in the wind. Aside from injury troubles that kept him off the field for more time than at any previous point in his career, Hanley's attitude issues became more glaring with a slight decline in production. Warning signs were there, but things culminated in May of 2010. After rolling a foul ball off of his ankle earlier in the game, Hanley Ramirez muffed a shallow fly ball and accidentally kicked the ball further into left field. His lack of hustle in retrieving the ball caused two runs to score in what would eventually become a loss to the Diamondbacks. Manager Freddy Gonzalez, clearly upset with Hanley's behavior, benched him the following game. It's very rare to see teammates and a coach unified in the decision to ostracize a player, but that was the case with these Marlins in 2010. Ramirez told the media that he didn't believe he had done anything wrong and made his animosity toward his manager quite clear. The quote that went very public was damning to the relationship between Hanley and the team. He said, it's his team, he can do whatever the f he wants. Gonzalez maintained that the benching was due to attitude issues while Hanley insisted that it was due to his bruised ankle. Hanley's media circus act was largely excused thanks to his continued success in 2010, but things got ugly by next year. Shoulder issues kept Hanley off the field for nearly half of the 2011 season, and his production took a massive hit for the first time in his career. Hanley finished the 2011 season with just 92 games and the worst stats of his career. Despite regaining his health for the 2012 season, Hanley's production stayed mediocre. He had made the move to third base with the Marlins addition of Jose Reyes among other star free agents, but their effort to rebrand with a new stadium and a new roster led to no real success. Finally, with the team's fire sale already in motion at that year's deadline, a deal was struck. Hanley Ramirez was sent to the Los Angeles Dodgers with Nate Eovaldi going back to Miami in return. Just three years into his extension, Hanley's time in Florida was finished. It was time for Hanley to go Hollywood. Hanley did find rejuvenation with his new uniform, but his output would never again match his prime years in Miami. In three seasons with Los Angeles, Hanley put up respectable offensive numbers while his speed wavered and his defense became worse than it had ever been. But he was still looked at as one of the most feared hitters in the National League, even if he was a liability in the field and in the clubhouse. Hanley's 2013 season jumps off the page especially. He was dealing with hamstring issues, shoulder issues, fractured ribs, and more across his Dodgers tenure, causing him to miss half of the 2013 season. Still, despite only playing in 86 games that year, Hanley was so good that he still managed to finish 8th in MVP voting. When you see his offensive numbers, it's easy to see why, including a 189 OPS+. Plus. Hanley also finally got his first taste of playoff action and shined in the national spotlight. Between three postseason sets from 2013 to 2014, he shined at the plate despite the Dodgers coming up short in back-to-back -back seasons. But by 2015, it became clear that Hanley's athleticism was dwindling and no one was sure how much longer he could hold on to the power he had left in the tank. He was finally replaced at shortstop and moved around the field due to his defensive woes, and with his original Marlins deal finally ending, the Dodgers were prepared to move on from the spark plug that had lost its fire. Perhaps the most remembered part of Hanley's tumultuous three-year tenure with the Dodgers is this Corey Dickerson ground ball he muffed in a game against Colorado. This would happen to be the Rockies' only base runner in a no-hitter thrown by Clayton Kershaw, which by proxy would have been a perfect game. Whoops. His next stop would be his last significant one, and fitting at that, as Hanley returned home to the team that originally traded him, the Boston Red Sox. Hanley wouldn't find much success here either, aside from his 2016 season, where he hit 36 home runs and 101 RBI, amassing those benchmarks for the first time in nearly a decade. Boston moved him 
around from the corner infield spots to left field to DH, and it became clear that if Hanley wasn't hitting, he was a liability for any MLB team. Injuries continued plaguing Hanley in his 30s, his glove virtually non-existent at this point, and by 2018, Boston had seen enough. The Red Sox ultimately DFA'd Ramirez in the end. Ramirez had a brief spot in Cleveland the following year before finally calling it quits. Because of his drastic falloff in production, many don't remember how good Hanley was for a long stretch of time. His run from 2006 to 2010 is one of the best five-year periods in baseball history. For his career, Hanley became one of just five players in MLB history, with five 20-home run, 20-stolen base seasons, joining Mike Trout, Carlos Beltran, Bobby Abreu, and Ian Desmond. He's one of just three players with 250 home runs and 250 stolen bases since 2000, in an elite class with the aforementioned Beltran and Alfonso Soriano. While this combination of speed and power has become more common among MLB shortstops in recent years, it was incredibly special when Hanley first rose to stardom in 2006. Attitude issues, off-the-field troubles, and injuries hampered Hanley's legacy, and had he stayed healthy and focused, Hanley was on a surefire path to becoming an eventual Hall of Famer. I hope this video does him justice because he's way better than people remember. But that'll do it for this video, and now a word from today's sponsor, Keeps. Guys, two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time that they're 35, and you need to get ahead of the curve. But Keeps offers clinically proven research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth. With Keeps, you can get quality expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office or a pharmacy. All of their treatment plans are doctor-recommended and delivered straight to your door at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. Each treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging, so you can connect with your prescribing doctor about anything, anytime. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair that you have, in addition to clinically proven treatments, Keeps has an award-winning all-natural thickening shampoo and conditioner system. Their physicians will help you select the right products and treatments for your specific condition and hair goals. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash jolly or click the link in the description. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's video, and I'll see you guys next time.